Hey, what up all my two doctors and doctresses? Welcome to another episode for pharmacology at the Tooth Factory. Today we're going to talk about two very discrete topics. Number one, dysregulation of saliva and number two, diabetic patients with their managements. So get your pens and papers out and let's go. Make sure you like, share and subscribe and let us know in comments for more. All right, let's dive into the pharmacology at extra time. We're going to talk about two topics today, dysregulation of saliva and diabetes with management. So let's dive in. Let's begin with the dysregulation of saliva. Hyposalivation and hypersalivation, two very broad conditions. Hyposalivation, which is reduced salivary flow production, can be associated with xerostomia or Jogren syndrome, basically dry mouth. The cause in etiology is drug-induced with antidepressant, antipsychotics, anticholinergics, antihistamines, anxiolytics, anticonvulsants, diuretics, radiotherapy, chemotherapy. So if you anti anything, it will reduce the salivary flow, causing xerostomia. Treatment, oral hygiene. Yes, maintain oral hygiene. Use xylitol gum or citric acid fruits. They are very effective in increasing salivary flow. Or salivary substitutes such as biotin. Not so effective, but still can be used. Also cyalogogs, such as pilocarpines, which are cholinergic agonists which will increase salivary flow through acetylcholine. Now, hypersalivation opposite, which is the increase in the salivary flow or production associated with sialuria or tylism, basically drooling. Etiology or the cause includes, well, drooling. Number two is drug induced with muscarinic agonists, anticholine esterase, so increasing acetylcholine activity, clazapine, L-dopa, which is dopamine, and hypercholinergism, when you apply a lot of cholinergic drugs, this condition can occur, increasing all the secretory functions, including saliva. The treatment for hypersalivation is glycopyrrolate, propanthylene bromide, atropine, ipratropine bromide. Most of these are anticholinergic drugs, which will reduce the acetylcholine action by blocking it or indirectly and reducing salivary flow. Let's get on with diabetes. Very broad, very important diabetes. It is a group of metabolic diseases characterized by high blood glucose level, also known as hyperglycemia, and the inability to produce the use insulin, which breaks down the glucose. Now, diabetes mellitus type 1 and type 2. Let's look at type 1. It is a disease of glucose, fat, and protein metabolism resulting from impaired insulin secretion. So lack of insulin secretion from the pancreatic beta islet cells. Patient needs continuous insulin supply. So this is the one with the injections. The common medications includes rapid acting, short acting, intermediate acting, long acting and premixed combinations. All of these in one way or the other are insulin, synthetic, natural, mixed, either way, such as Rapid acting has insulin as part or short acting has regular soluble insulin or intermediate acting has the isophane. Long acting has insulin clergin. Premixed combination. So you can mix all the groups for better effect. Diabetes mellitus type 2 is characterized by relative insulin deficiency and insulin resistance. So this is important because if insulin resistance is added where tissues or target organs cannot accept the pre-existing insulin. It's a receptor issue. The common medications are sulfonylureas, piguanides, thiazolidiodines or glitazones, alpha-glucosidase inhibitors or meglinides. Now these drugs are usually in oral form, not the injection form, where they act at different areas such as the receptors by increasing the affinity or the acceptability of insulin or actually increasing the insulin production and both ways. Diabetes patient management. Now this Pink diagram is very important to understand step by step. Number one, confirm that the patient has taken the normal doses of medic medication. Medication is important. Number two, short morning appointments. Do not keep morning appointments. If you do, keep them short. Number three, appointments should not interfere with patient's usual meal intake. This is because when glucose is produced after a meal, insulin needs to act. So let's not do a treatment then. Number four, oral glucose source 
should be ready in case of emergencies, such as IV glucose. Number five, glycosylated hemoglobulin HbA1c must be less than 7%. Number six, have a glucometer ready. In your clinic, you must have a glucometer ready in order to see if symptoms arise for hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. We can diagnose it right then and there. Number seven, review of systems, especially the cardiovascular systems. These steps are very important in a clinical practice. Not the least for pharmacology, diabetic patients. They can be hyperglycemic or hypoglycemic. Hyperglycemic is increase in blood sugar levels can lead to diabetic coma. Now, what are the signs and symptoms in case you face an emergency in your clinic or around you at home? Signs and symptoms include thirst, excessive urination, number three, weakness and fatigue, number four, visual disturbances, so blurry visions, number five, tiredness, number six, drowsiness, number seven, dry skin and heat production from the skin. Number eight, these are the values that you can determine by the blood Line. Management for hyperglycemic patients can be divided into conscious and unconscious. If the patient is conscious, let's follow P, A, B, C, D. P is position, make sure they're upright or semi-upright. Airway is clear, let them breathe. P is breathing, make sure they're breathing in normal continuous cycles, which is 16 to 18 per minute. C is circulation, is there a pulse? Check two different types of pulses, let's say radial or femoral. D, oxygen, administer oxygen in order for them to breathe. If nothing works out, call the nearest hospital. It's 911 in North America. Unconscious patients. Again, P, A, B, C, D. Position must be supine. Airway clear, breathing clear, circulation clear. D is dispense oxygen, must administer oxygen. And if nothing works out, again, call the hospital. This is how you manage a hyperglycemic patient before he can or she can head into diabetic coma. Emergency. Hypoglycemia, it's called the insulin shock. The signs and symptoms make sure, look around you at home, neighbors or clinics, anywhere. Signs and symptoms includes hunger or nausea, weakness or headache, tachycardia, which is increased in heart rate over 100, sweating, shaking, irritability, slurred speech, so your tongue wobbles, Number six, the change in mood or behavior. And last is the blood glucose level as on a blood test. Management for hypoglycemic patients before they get into insulin shock, it is either in conscious or unconscious state. Now, when they're conscious, make sure they're positioned upright. Airway, breathing, and circulation is clear. And make sure you dispense a high sugar drink. Because they're conscious, they can drink and in minutes, their glucose level will be up on the rise. When the patient is unconscious, make sure you're in their supine position, lay them down, airway, breathing, circulation is clear, and then you gotta dispense an oxygen three to six liters per minute, and also 50% dextrose IV, or glucagon, one milligram subcutaneous or IM or IV. So make sure you administer that during an unconscious hypoglycemic patients.